Welcome to Sustain This, a podcast where we discuss mindful consumption, personal style, and the quest for living a more intentional life. I'm Alyssa, a sustainable stylist. And I'm Christina, a shopaholic turned minimalist-ish. And I'm Sina, a color consultant and slow fashion style coach. Together, we will unpack the nuances of what it really means to be a conscious consumer and find more joy in what we have right now. So grab your tea, your coffee, or whatever floats your boat, and join us in the conversation. Let's go. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are talking about habits to level up your style without shopping. Um, and this is something we all talk about frequently on each of our channels. Um, so we have a whole list of things um, <laughs> to help you get started. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to try to kind of break it down for you guys today and to really like build those, those great core like, habits evolving around style um and for me i think you know it can be a little bit daunting it can be a little bit terrifying getting started with a new habit so i think um something that is really powerful uh i'm just gonna put it out there is to acknowledge that it will be a process um and that great things come from small beginnings mm -hmm. so and time um, yeah yeah i feel like repeating outfits is a way that you develop a sense of what it is you like, what feels good, what makes you feel able to sort of move through the world, whatever it is you're doing. Uh, and I think it's a, to me, it's like the best way to find your signature style and your style uniform. And in my opinion, I feel like the most stylish people are the people who, if you really like kind of evaluate and like break it down, they have they are outfit repeaters in the sense of like, and this is the way I've always sort of looked at a style uniform. It's like, it's not necessarily, not necessarily that you're wearing the same, like, you know, turtleneck and jeans and new balance sneakers, a la Steve Jobs. It's more the, what's your outfit formula and how do you build your style <clears throat> and your daily outfits around that? Like for me, my formula for sure is blazer top pants, shoe whatever but it changes all the time so maybe it'll be a tank top or a tube top and the blazer is going to be different or playing with different colors and the bottom might be a maxi skirt now or a pair of jeans or a pair of trousers so like essentially knowing your style uniform grounding yourself in what feels good and then just repeating that permutation and combination throughout yeah yeah and it does help you kind of find your style because then you can yeah, you figure out what works, what doesn't, and it kind of forces you to wear your clothes. Mine is, I mean, can I jump to shopping your closet? Because that's what yeah. I feel like when I, yeah. when I, when my closet got really small and when my income also got really small, that's when I shopped my closet out of necessity. And that's actually when I found my personal style. And when I really started to understand what it means to like, yeah that's a smaller closet um but it really helped so shopping your closet and I think the biggest one for me in terms of like leveling up your style without shopping is learning how to I talk about this all the time see your clothing as elements of style and just see fashion in general as elements of style because then as soon as you start and that takes time that takes so much practice and time and like retraining your brain to see even when you're shopping out or if you're in your closet it's like all of these t-shirts are not t-shirts they're they're high contrast they're texture they're different proportions they're different silhouettes and then as soon as you start reframing your clothes in that way it's almost like the possibilities are endless in your closet because you can just manipulate mm. them in whichever way you want to to exude whatever you feel like in that day Mm -hmm. with what you've already got and I think that's like that's cool yeah yeah definitely I really like the idea of taking selfies mm. like that's definitely <laughs> on the top of because you know of course I we're content creators we have like a huge library probably each of us like of outfits we've worn in the past but I've this the, the past couple of weeks I've been going through the folders on my phone um 
like images and I've been going through folders of pictures all the way back from 2017 mm. when I started uh, like for real making YouTube videos. And there are so many outfits where I'm like, this outfit is great. Like I want to wear that again, but we I forget about them. Like I forget that that was an option because you can be so focused on like, okay, well, what new outfits can I build um, from within my mm. wardrobe? So like just the idea of taking selfies and like documenting my style more but also like actually taking a day out in my calendar to gather those photos from like previous years so maybe I can like make seasonal folders like this will be my summer folder and my you know autumn folder and then just saving my favorite outfits and kind of turning to those as outfit inspiration for the next I don't know while mm -hmm. uh, I really really like that idea and I think it's something everyone can probably if you don't have the photos now, maybe you can start creating them. Um, doesn't have to be like a professional setup, just a little mirror selfie of an outfit that you enjoy wearing. Um, because we talked a lot about that in the previous episode, that personal style is very much about a feeling. And I think when you see a certain outfit in a picture, you can almost remember what you felt when you wore that outfit. Um, mm. Yeah, so I think that for me, that's definitely a habit I want to work on really like developing this year yeah so you just like you know you always check your mirror you check yourself before you leave the house just grab a quick quick selfie and yeah out the door. yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah I find that's a really good way um that's a good way to find your style uniform and to see if you are sort of an outfit repeater mm -hmm. or like to identify the common threads in the outfits especially as you build up a library I feel like you can see it even within one week um and I think a week is like a week to two weeks is probably enough to kind of cover a lot of events. Like maybe you have a date night that week or if you have to pick up the kids from school or go to work or whatever, whatever it is you do in your regular life. Because the other thing is too, is I think the, for me, the most important habit, one of the most important habits is to get dressed every day, even if it's for nothing. Mm -hmm. So, and especially if you're doing that, coupling that with taking selfies, you can really start to see what it is you like, what it is you don't like, and what you gravitate towards. Mm. But getting dressed. Yeah, and I like that, you know, if there's an outfit you put together, you don't like it, just don't include it in the, the library, you know? You <laughs> yeah. can just delete yeah. it, yeah. you know? Totally. Yeah. Or, like, keep a folder of, like, okay, I definitely didn't like wearing this, and then keep it that for, like, a, I don't know, learning, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, so oh, I, sorry. I know, um, like Alyssa or both of you, well, I mean, Sina, you have your studio, but Alyssa, I think you work from home a lot, mm -hmm. <clears throat> create, um, within your business. So, and I feel like you're, I feel like you get dressed like multiple times a day into different <laughs> outfits. <laughs> you change. <laughs> <laughs> So do you have any advice for a lot of, for people who work from home that want to feel a little bit more put together at home and maybe not necessarily wear like leggings and a sweatshirt yeah. kind of thing? Because I think when you work from home, that's the hardest part to get dressed every day Fully. and like wear real clothes. Like, do you want to wear a blazer all day in your house, you know? Yeah, no. Yeah. To me, okay, the biggest challenge that I've found is if you can figure is getting your footwear right, because that's where everything falls apart. You're not like going to wear your cute, like two inch, you know, little pumps or whatever wandering around your apartment. And I feel like at least I'm a shoe person. So mm -hmm. if you're just going to wander around in socks or like your giant fluffy slippers, the rest of your outfit is just going to fall flat and feel weird. So you're like, well, if I'm not going to wear good shoes, like why? Like I'm just going to wear pajamas all day. I mean, that's kind of how I <laughs> was thinking at first. So for me, the game changer was either invest in or like designate a pair of like a little flat or a shoe that is really cute and comfortable that you can wear around the house, maybe have one or two pairs that are like your indoor shoes that are still put together or get some slippers that are really cute that like feel a little bit more substantial than like a slouchy, sloopy, uh, that's not even a word, mm -hmm. slipper. <laughs> because mm -hmm. then, then your outfit feels more appropriate, like 
then it, it almost, it's a better motivation. It's like, okay, no, I can put together, like I can wear like a cool slouchy trouser with just a nice crew neck. Like it doesn't also, it also doesn't have to be groundbreaking, right? Like it doesn't have to be, mm-hmm. you can still have a more relaxed or casual outfit. But um, for me, the, the footwear is key. When I got a cute slipper that I liked and um, when I designated, like I have two pairs of flats that are like indoor, indoor flats and then, I wear those. So I think for me, it's all about the shoe. Oh, wow. Interesting. I've never heard mm, that yeah, before. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it's funny because I, I think people are just so different there, right? Mm-hmm. I, I watched someone on um, TikTok and I was going through, like, sometimes you look at the comments just mm-hmm. out of curiosity. Um, and she shared, like, a little, this is what I wore to work this week, like, working from home. And she wore shoes and all of the outfits. Mm. And people were, like, going mad about the fact that she was wearing shoes. Like, you wore shoes at home? Like, I would never wear <laughs> shoes. And she was like, well, yeah, they make me stay focused, you know? They do. And I think for some mm-hmm. people, like, maybe that's how it is for you, Alyssa. And I think, yeah, it's about figuring out, like, what is doing it for mm. you. Um, yeah. That's a that's a great point. Yeah, like, figure out what it is that that will motivate you to get your, your cutest outfit together. Um, yeah. Yeah. And not put so yeah, much because pressure. I think sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, yeah, no. I just wanted to say, like, um, I think it's in fashion psychology, the book that you know they talk about in clothes mm-hmm. cognition and all that. You know, wearing a certain outfit can make you more productive, and I think, you know, the most important thing is to wear something that allows you to do the job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally. So you kind of need to figure out what that means to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, like Christina, I'm just so curious. I know you've been working out a lot. So do you? Do you, are you, cause I, I know when I work out, if I'm going to, so now, like if I run at lunch, sometimes I just start with my leggings and I keep like my running outfit and I keep them on until lunch. Cause then that also forces me to go for my run. But like, how do you manage your gym? Like, do you change or do you, do you find yourself staying in leggings? No, because I, I go to the gym in the evening. So oh, okay. either straight from work or if I'm working right. from home, then I will go, um, in the evenings and uh so I will change but I feel like I've started to embrace um feeling a little bit more elevated and like on my way to the gym great you know so yeah I'm like I relate oh do you (laughs) yeah (laughs) um so like you know maybe I'll be like in my in my leggings and and my sneakers or whatever but then I've We'll put on like a really great coat or something or like mm. have like I've worn the blazer to the gym as like a layering piece mm. like just like integrating your clothes um you know and with layer with proper layers so I'm not like sweating and then like destroying my blazer mm. and needing to get a dry clean and so like blazer t-shirt hoodie or something like that so um I play around a lot with like layering and stuff when I'm going to the gym because it's a bit yeah. of a commute and it's like kind of an opportunity for me to do that whole athleisure chic mm. kind of moment. <laughs> but no, I find um, I don't like when I'm working from home, I don't really like to wear leggings all day because mm-hmm. I find I that enclosed cognition thing definitely plays a part. Like mm. um, I bought a few like kind of they're kind of like track pants kind of vibe but to me they're a little bit more elevated and they're easy to pair like what what I love why I'm such a blazer girl is because I feel like they are such a valve piece where they can immediately just elevate Mm -hmm. even the most casual or athletic looking outfit Mm. so if I don't necessarily want to be like wearing jeans at home or like a skirt or a dress or whatever Mm -hmm. then um I like having those track pants that are kind of or sweatpants that are like a little bit more they just feel a little bit more chic to me whether it be Mm -hmm. in like the fabrication or the design um and that way I'm kind of like getting like my sweatpant vibe but I still feel a little bit more put together and it doesn't make Mm -hmm. me feel like weighed down in the sense of oh I feel like I'm in my pajamas all day Mm -hmm. long or something Mm -hmm. I really like the outfit or like the idea you shared the other day Christina with wearing like um sweatpants with like an Oxford mm. shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really love great. that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I think you know, playing on the contrast between those two yes, pieces, I, I think it's a it's nice like a way to yeah. Yeah, to pressing. really like still feel laid back because they're comfortable pants, like you can sit down and they're not like mm. uncomfortable or in any way. And then pairing that with a nice shirt, like why not? Mm. Um I really like that 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I, yeah, I think it, and I think that's a good way to think about it. Like if you want to wear your leggings, can you pair it with like a beautiful chunky knit turtleneck mm. sweater or something yeah. or, or an Oxford mm. button up and like style it in a way that feels like yourself or more relaxed. Um, I think, I think playing in dressing in antonyms and like mm-hmm. contrast dressing. So dressing in opposites is like a great way to if you want to turn something up or turn it down, then mm-hmm. that's like the good jumping off of uh, jumping off point, which is like, I mean, I think mm-hmm. that's a habit in itself too. Like, you know, so if you don't want to wear at home trousers, button up shirt, <clears throat> loafers, all that, that might feel very like too corporate or like too put together. Mm-hmm. So yeah, throwing on a pair of silk pants or like a pair of jeans makes it a bit more chill. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of makes me think of another point, which is, um, I think it's a really fun and it's it costs you nothing and it takes no time. This habit is to just um, wear something unexpected because we often we often have our go to's, which is fine, and our uniforms, which is also fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I find, you know, if you're always reaching for the same things, or if you're always reaching for the same sort of look, like if you think, okay, I have this top, so I'm going to wear it with these shoes. I think it's kind of a fun exercise to be like, wait a minute, what's the exact opposite of this look, whether you're Mm -hmm. reaching for like your third layer, or an accessory, and it's like, maybe you have like, a really pulled together sort of corporate inspired look, but then you put on a pair of like kooky glasses, or a really wacky earring. I think Mm -hmm. having an training your brain to add an element of surprise or that unexpected element can be kind of fun. And you can put together some really Mm -hmm. interesting looks with that. Um, So kind of to your contrast dressing point, um, Mm -hmm. that's always fun. Yeah. I think accessories too. I feel like accessories are, they're not given the time hundred percent. And I feel like I I heard someone say, and I am totally in agreement that we tend to over invest in clothes and under invest slash under buy accessories. Totally. And I think like like I've been keeping I've been kind of looking at my wish list this month and literally all of it is like belts. Mm-hmm. Like I want to get a few more belts, like some interesting belts that whether it be thrifted or whatever. Um and I'm just like, I feel like a cool belt or a cool, like, as you say, pair of glasses or a funky pair of earrings will such an easy way to change up a look and to add something a little, like, just to zhuzh it up a little bit. Um, Another habit that I think is sometimes overlooked, I know we've talked about this, um, but it's, it's like, put, put your clothes away properly. Don't leave them hanging on the back of the chair. Yeah. yeah, Don't, if it's so important, right? Like Mm -hmm. I've, yeah. Oh my God. Like, yeah. I, I know that like there's hooks and things like that in our room and they're great, but if you can just put your shit back the way it came. Because, yeah. like, <laughs> also because like, if you forget, like I have a tendency to fold the exact outfit I wore, like this is what I wore yesterday yeah, right. because I was too lazy to, and I put it on the bathroom sink right? and then out of ease, I just put on the same thing this morning. Great. So if you put it away, you also kind of force yourself mm, to put something new. new together. That's a really good point too. Yeah. Ooh, that yeah, that's true. a good but point. But I too. love that point. I love that point of putting it away properly. Yeah. I think that's really overlooked and very important. Yeah. Cause it's like you're not gonna yeah. want to to pull out your pieces that are wrinkly or that are on the back of the chair. And then like you said, Zena, you're not gonna see it anyway. So like you mm. won't use your whole closet, which is a big part of elevating your style without shopping. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Yeah, or yeah. just like even Good keeping one. your keeping your closet organized so you can see everything. Yeah. Like a hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. 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 Also because like we, you know, I think decluttering is really, you know, can be important. But I think if you make that habit of putting things back properly mm-hmm. while also maybe lowering your consumption generally, it totally. will allow, you know, you will don't you don't have to you won't have to declutter it that a hundred percent. Like you can mm-hmm. keep it that way. Yeah. A hundred percent. That all goes back to the point of like slow fashion and sustainable style is a, is a holistic practice, right? Every one tiny thing you do informs the other and it makes the rest of it just all so much more easy. Um, So yeah, great point. Mm. 
Oh, Ooh, learn the else? art of styling over shopping. Yeah, that is my that's my mantra for twenty twenty four. Right, because I think styling is a skill. I mean, I think shopping is a skill too, mm-hmm. but um, I feel like it's a lot easier to do that mindlessly sometimes. And mm. I think for me, like, <clears throat> I'm great at shopping. I love shopping. I. Mm you know, you don't get need to give me a reason. I will go and I, and I love to do it, but I feel like a big disconnect for many of us is once you have that piece, once you have that thing and like, you can ask yourself the questions like, Oh, you know, can I wear it five different ways before I buy it? Or like, you know, there's ways to slow it down and to make it mindful and intentional, but now you have the piece in your hand or in your closet, like, now what what are you gonna do so I think it's um it's how to use that piece and like integrate it into your wardrobe and learning how to style it once it's on your body and like creating different outfits with it like I think that's where that's where the potential of something gets unlocked that's where you find your style that's where you learn to outfit repeat learn Mm -hmm. to find out what your style uniform is learn to manipulate the clothes once they're on your body um yeah, I think it's the using part instead of the acquiring mm-hmm. part. A hundred percent. And the, I think I the, like how you yeah. describe it as a skill or almost like a muscle you need mm-hmm. to work. Because yeah, oh, yeah. you know, again, just to use that example with like the outfit I'm wearing, and I will do this like during the weekend too. Like I'll just wear the same mm-hmm. thing out of ease. Like I'm definitely a little bit lacy like that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Totally. And I think like it's going beyond that and like you know, it's like, it is like an exercise. It is like a muscle you need to work on training. And it's not necessarily something that just comes with ease. And I think you just, baby. yeah, yeah, (laughs) I think you kind of need to be aware of that, right? Like, are you Mm -hmm. willing to do the work that it will probably require? Like, I'm not saying it's hard work. I think everyone can learn. But you know, every time you want to learn a new habit or, you know, a new skill, Mm -hmm. it's something you need to, you know, spend time on properly Mm -hmm. exercising yeah Yeah. and that brings us to that other point of which we've spoken about before is to give yourself that time maybe wait before you buy the next thing (laughs) even if you have something Mm -hmm. on your list like give each space some breathing room to play with it in your closet before shopping again Mm. yeah 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 I feel like that's the I don't know. I feel like that's like been the missing piece for a lot of, because especially now with like TikTok and how things move so quickly and Mm -hmm. like how we're served content that creates these wants that we never knew existed. It's just so easy to get caught up in that. And then by the time you get that thing, then there's like a new thing that's in your face that you want. So it just creates that like getting caught up in that, I think it's like so easy for so much of us. And um, yeah, and it's like, it's not as sexy to use what you have. It's no. not as, you know, as interesting, I guess, to use what you have. But if, I mean, from a social media standpoint, I totally. guess, but like a clickbaity kind of standpoint. But I mean, if you want to do the work to find your style and build those habits, that's like, that's where it's going to come from, from what you have. Mm-hmm. And of course, like you can identify gaps, but it's still like, how is that a gap going to integrate into your closet? How are we going to style it? How are we going to use it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. Another one, which is less to do with like, it might not seem so directly correlated, but uh, de- gratitude, man. <laughs> Every time, <laughs> practice your gratitude. Do you have like a thing like... Do you have any like, I mean, as you know, you talk about style affirmations yeah. and stuff like that. Like when you, like when you're in your outfit, let's say even when you're taking your selfie, like, is this like a habit that you can stack together, right? Like, Ooh. what do you say to yourself? Oh yeah, I like that. When you. Stacking your habits. Yeah. yeah I yeah. love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, I like that yeah. better because then it seems more directly linked to your closet when you're like doing your affirmation or your gratitude. So what do you Mm. say? Like, what would you say? Let's say you're taking your selfie and it's just like, this is the time you're slowing down. You're inspecting 
you're fit? Like what, how do you express gratitude? What are some things that you say? Gosh, I, I am so basic. My, my, my gratitude is around fashion and clothing is usually, I'm just so grateful that I have a closet full of clothes that fit me and that Mm -hmm. I love. Um, and I'm so great. That's usually basically what it is. And that I have the means to buy clothes that I love. That's like usually Mm -hmm. like the most, the basic, that's it. Like I just, I'm so, I'm so grateful that I have clothes. (laughs) Like it's very basic, but I think if you like another good one, and I don't know, like Sina, your, your, your style affirmations might be more specific and maybe that would be probably better and more impactful would be like, I'm so grateful that I feel comfortable enough in my skin to wear this and to like Mm -hmm. step out in it and to share my own viewpoint without feeling like I'm Mm going to be judged and without caring that I'm going to be judged. Like, I think Mm. that's, that would probably be one also, but yeah. Yeah. What are some of the most used style affirmations or like, do you find there's a pattern, Sina, with your clients? Like what's everyone's sort of biggest hurdle that they have to get over in terms of that like personal piece to wear um I I think for many it is like I'm really glad we're talking about style as a habit because I think it is really very much evolving around habit like again just using myself as an example a lot of my clients are like kind of in the same life situation as me like maybe they're on maternity leave or it's like after maternity leave and they're trying to kind of get back on their feet and figuring out who am I what can I wear around a child or a toddler Um, and it is very much based around like habits or concerns about like what if it gets ruined or what if I Mm -hmm. spill something on this or Uh, But again, just like for me, it's like, okay, this is easiest. This is quickest. This is the outfit I already had laying out from yesterday. I'll just wear this, you know, and it's an old sweater I've had for like 12 years. It's okay if I get spilled Mm on. Um, So I think that's like the most general like thing for people. But I also think just, um, you know, a a sense of, you know, deserving to look Mm -hmm. great or taking that time. I think we've talked about that before, Mm -hmm. you know, that's definitely something I tell myself, like, first of all, I think, okay, what would a stylish person do? Like, can I come to think about someone who I admire for their style? Maybe they have small kids too. And it, okay, if she can wear that, then I can definitely wear that around my kid too. Um, And then like, you know, just thinking to myself that, you know, I deserve to wear this. Mm -hmm. I deserve to look good. You know, I'm not a... Mm -hmm a bad person for wanting to take time for myself in the morning Mm -hmm. to, you know, look great. Like that doesn't make me a narcissist. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's the whole, you need to put on your own like oxygen mask Mm -hmm. first before you can be someone for someone else, you know? So I think the whole thing about like deserving to wear your best clothes, I think is really important. Like Mm -hmm. you definitely deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and just, you know, speaking about habits, habit stacking and all of that, I've mentioned atomic habits a lot of times, I feel like, in season Mm -hmm. one. And definitely, like, if you haven't read the book yet, I would definitely recommend it. And maybe if working on your personal style this year is, like, a big goal for you, maybe read it through the lens of Mm. personal style. Yeah, because you can use it for anything, really, like any habit you want to break, like if you want to quit smoking or if you want to start exercising, like it has like some really great uh, tactics and like some really great things in there to put structure on building a habit. But I think if you read it from the lens of wanting to develop your personal style and really get confident with your style and with fashion in general, I think it's uh, it's really worth the read. Mm, Definitely. That's a great tip. Definitely. to read it through that lens yeah or through the lens of anything you yes, want to change yeah. in your life you know but since yes. we're speaking personal style then great <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. yeah what do you think christina i know you're a you you were i remember we spoke about this like you have less of an inclination to declutter your closet um, mm-hmm. But in the past, like how you got to this point, I think perhaps through some some regular decluttering, can you can you yes. explain like how that decluttering, what the process was, like why, like what were the pinpoints where you saw it was really helpful? Was it because you could just see more of what you already had or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I started off 
like a sign you have too much stuff is if you like open up your wardrobe and you're just overwhelmed mm. by everything that's in there or Great you point. only wear the same thing over and over and over again and you still have a closet full of clothes. I mean that the classic feeling of closet full of clothes, nothing to wear. And um, or if you're like having to shove things out of the way, to, you know, so my wardrobe was packed to the brim with stuff that I didn't even know what was in there. Um, and I just felt the sense of overwhelm of like, I have too much. I don't know what this is. I'm bringing new things in without even knowing what I have. So it's definitely a feeling that you identify or just um, like obstacles and hindrances that get in your way every morning when getting dressed. Mm. Um, so if you get that sense of, I have too much stuff, then I think that is a sign to declutter. And um, yeah, it took me like three years to declutter to mm. like, I mean, I went to a point where I got, I call it declutter drunk. Like I just like over decluttered, I feel like. And that was when I was really chasing that whole like Steve Jobs minimalist wardrobe. And I didn't think it was a virtuous thing to care about style. And I was trying to basically eliminate that from my personality almost. Um, and I, you know, and I've, it took a little bit of work to accept that. It's like, nah, you're going to have a bigger wardrobe and that's okay. Um, because you can still like to me, you know, using it and wearing it and not feeling overwhelmed by it every time you open it up, that's like, that's the key. Mm. Um, and even with usage, I don't know, because you can have like sentimental items or like a, an occasion, like a true occasion piece that you only wear at certain times. So you don't, I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea that you need to be like actively, regularly using everything that you decide mm -hmm. to keep, mm -hmm. but it really is about what sparks joy and decluttering from a perspective of what you do want to keep but I think um if you're feeling overwhelmed by your closet and just the sense that there is too much functionally um emotionally and it like impacts your kind of stress levels and all that mm -hmm. then decluttering for sure so I mean I started with like a few a big purge and then decluttered regularly over time and that can be like I often liked to declutter as I was doing it um, a little bit more regularly. And I would say I still do this is like when I'm putting away laundry. Mm -hmm. So like, as you say, like, don't do the clutter catcher chair, put your stuff away, which <laughs> I have like clothes that need putting away from my laundry now that I've been procrastinating. Um, but I find like if I have to like shove things out of the way or if I'm putting something away and there's something beside it where it's like, oh, I haven't worn that in a while. Maybe I should wear it or... I haven't reached for this and I don't really care for it or I have something that I like better than like that's an opportunity to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very tailored to what you need. Um, some people like to do a big, huge declutter or some people like to do, you know, five pieces every time you decide to or whatever it is. Um, but it's getting to a point where I think you feel excited and inspired every time you open up your wardrobe and there, there's it feels like there's some space for you um, and for your things. So you can see everything. You kind of know what you have. Uh, organization obviously also helps that too. So, but I'm like, for me, I, yeah, I'm just at this point where I'm like, I don't really feel like I need to declutter as to the extent that I, right. that I did before. <clears throat> it's amazing. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the point. I mean, I, I think it's important, like, because things will always come and go into your life. There is a certain amount of maintenance declutter that needs to happen with everything. So I'm not saying that I will never declutter again. I just don't think that's a reasonable thing because part of life is so fluid. But I don't feel this, like, I don't feel that overwhelming sense of, like, I have too much stuff and, like, it's where it's impacting my ability to get dressed. I was just going to say, it's kind of a nice way to kind of finish it in the sense that I think we are so trained through messaging and media and just how we've been brought up. Like if you have a problem or if you're struggling with something, what is it that you can add? Like, oh, you need hmm. this. Like our brains are trained to always add if we have a problem. Whereas yeah. This was kind of a good reminder that like maybe we have to just sort of reframe and shift our thinking in the sense that like maybe it's not about adding anything. Maybe it's just taking a step back or in some cases doing a little edit. So mm -hmm. just re retraining yeah, like our brains. Yeah. yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. it's 
it's that idea that you're you're curating Mm -hmm. you're not getting rid of like curation is the process of editing so you do take things away but you also add things Mm -hmm. thoughtfully Mm -hmm. let us know some style habits that you felt have helped improve your style improved your wardrobe leave us a comment down below we'd love to hear from you and we'll see you next week thanks for listening bye 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 Thank you so much for joining in our conversation this week. If you're enjoying the show, we'd love it if you subscribe to the podcast on Spotify and Apple and leave us a rating and review. It's one of the best ways to support the Sustain This podcast at zero cost to you. We're also a community-led podcast, so if you have any questions for us, topic requests, or even guests you want to hear from, please send us a DM on Instagram at sustainthis underscore podcast. We read all of our comments and look forward to hearing from you. We hope you join us again next Tuesday, where we'll talk about so much more than clothes. Ciao!